Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we tried to have a celebrity introduction <laughs> for our five-year anniversary episode yeah. of Sandcast. <laughs> Yeah. The chocolate face. The chocolate face, Naya Born. <laughs> you do you, Naya. Sand- you do you. Welcome to Sandcast with Triborn and Travis Mwerder. I'm Naya, and I'm your host. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to give Daddy some tips on how to play volleyball today. <laughs> Can you do that for us, Naya? Naya, what do you think Daddy could do better when he plays volleyball? She's catching on to us. She knows that we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not going to work. That was too good. Yeah. Well, this is a fun episode for the Sandcast fam. A bit of a special episode. We're bringing on the full family today. Uh, the podcast that began uh, with the recent, recently married Borns. You guys were married oh for gosh. like, what, two weeks? Five years ago. Oh, yeah, wow. I think we had just gotten married. Because, Tri, you said the anniversary is October 7th. Yep. And then you guys just got back from Bali and then we, record, we recorded the episode named Boo to Try. Yep. And, and that we, was five years we ago. We just had our five year anniversary. Last week. That's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> Delaney wasn't a part of the family. No, we and didn't Naya know Delaney. wasn't a part yet. of the family. <laughs> but Delaney came into the family while we were still in that first podcast studio in our kitchen, around our kitchen table. Yeah. Yeah. So we've gone through three studios, added two members, never missed a Wednesday. You guys are amazing. <laughs> impressive. That's impressive. It's very impressive. Um, For sure. I, I think that's thanks to Travis. <laughs> Not trying. Oh, for sure. Maybe a few reruns I here and there. Travis gets all the credit for that. <laughs> oh no, you got it, Nye. <clears throat> That's our rookie member. We're gonna show. stay over here. <laughs> Bring it over here. Come put it together over here. We'll help you over here. Nice. No, bring it over here, or else. <laughs> or else put your it on the couch right here, down. and I can help you. <laughs> I should have given her a laugh, Mike. Do you want to? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Do you want to tell the listeners what you're building? Good, good job. <laughs> Hiding in the perfect spot behind the camera, too. Yeah. <laughs> but is it a Gab? Is it like kind of wild for you as like the wife of full time professional beach volleyball player? Because like, Delaney's married to a beach volleyball player. That's not what I do full time. Yeah. It's kind of a crazy life. Like, try you were gone for, like, six weeks on the road this year. But <clears throat> Yeah. And that's, like, a, an off year. Like, that's the least he's been gone the entire year. I know. I know. It was way busier before. And it's crazy because getting used to him traveling with a kid is way different to him traveling, like, without a kid. Because without a kid, before that, it was kind of like, oh, cool, like, you know, I get my time to, like, focus right. and, like, whatever. And then now it's like, oh, well, now I'm just kind of screwed. No, there's no, no time to focus because you're full time. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot different. But, um, but no, it's kind of just always how it's been. Even when we first, I mean, when we first started dating, we were in college, so we were together all the time. But, like, he graduated a year before me and went overseas to play indoor. Yeah. So, like, even from the beginning of our relationship, we were going months oh, so you, you without guys knew seeing right each other. That. We knew yeah. that was how it was going to be. Um, so yeah, we were always pretty used to it. And for the yep. listeners who, who don't know you, just give a little oh. background on, on what Miss Gabrielle Bourne does for oh a living. Oh my goodness. And where we, where we can <laughs> tune in to find you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, I do a whole lot of random things. I feel like, yeah, whenever people ask or whatever, it's just like hard to explain even what I do. Um, cause uh, or I guess most people just like don't know what to ask. Are you? It's like, are you still acting? Or are you still like, yeah. what, you know? Because a lot of the things that I do are not public things. Like once in a while, you'll see when I'm on something, it's like, oh, you are still acting, yeah. but like that's, you know, it's not all the time. Um, so yes, I'm still I'm acting. Um, that was my uh, that was my major in college, BFA an acting major that was always like my main focus yeah. and goal um and so I've been doing that throughout um working off and on 
And then in the last few years, I started, um, well, when we first graduated college, I was like bartending, waitressing on the side of acting kind of thing. The stereotypical side 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 actor job. job. (laughs) Um, And I did that for several years. And then I kind of started, you know, getting over the late night situation and I started, um, and I've always been, like, very into building and, like, refinishing and woodworking and all that. So I started, like, um, refinishing and building furniture for other people. Like, building custom furniture, whoever would trust me with it. Mm-hmm. And I, like, got some pretty cool jobs doing that and then refinishing furniture. That started in And that COVID, started right? picking up a lot. No, that was before. Before, before COVID? No, because oh. that, that was well before Naya. <laughs> Um, uh, it's all jumbled together. <laughs> <laughs> that was like right after we got married, so like five years ago. I remember when admiring I started, stuff like, when I would come over to your uh, house and be like, "Oh my gosh, she made this!" <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. That was yeah when we bought that first house like six years ago or whatever. That's when I first started getting really into it, and then I started building furniture, and then now we've uh, like a year and a half ago we bought like a total like. Um, fixer upper house and i've been spending a lot of time doing that um fixing it all up it's it's so cool to see like the transformation of your house because i remember when you guys first bought it like naya's queendom out here was just like rubble basically (laughs) you're like sand and your garage door i think was my favorite part of it It it's like welcome home olympian oh my god on the old garage (laughs) door before because i was like i know i was like i know where i I was embarrassed we like just moved into this town and i spray paint on the garage door (laughs) welcome home olympian and then the next week or whatever i wasn't used to it yet when he won on my house when he won (laughs) manhattan beach i spray painted on the other garage and MBO champ. <laughs> so everybody who passed by was like, um, and then, but then it was like, I think the garage doors were supposed to be taken and replaced like a few days after that, but then it ended up getting pushed back like two weeks. <laughs> so they sat there for like two weeks. Oh, that was crazy. <clears throat> that was interesting. Yeah. And then my bike got stolen. And then his bike got stolen. The renovation this year, last year and a half, with the whole like um, his, that trying to qualify for the Olympic season, and then at the same exact time, we bought a house that I like. Pro- we it was so the market's so bad, so it's so hard to find something, and we were. We put all of our stuff in storage during the pandemic. Like m- sold our house, moved out, put all of our stuff in storage, and moved to Hawaii for three months. And then we came back, and we were still looking for something, renting a place, staying with my parents. We couldn't find a house, and so um, we were like so desperate. And we found this one that was just like way over our budget, like just in the worst shape, needed everything done that you could possibly think of. But there were no other offers on it because yeah. nobody wanted it. <laughs> yeah. And so we were like, well, we can get it. So shouldn't we just do it so that we can, like, get started? And, like, once we do it, we know that it will be a good thing. But it's pretty risky because it's, like, yeah, tight. But anyway, we made it happen. And then I promised Try that I would not stress him out during Olympic qualification with any of the problems. So anytime something went wrong or, like, you know, that's (laughs) the other part of it is, like, he's got so much stress going on. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to handle this, like, (laughs) some way. I'm just going to figure it out. But that was, like, so stressful. Budget stuff. Like, I was, like, yeah, dealing everything without telling him a thing. With the house. Yeah. And I was unavailable. (laughs) And yeah, it was a it was a big risk. Yeah, it was pretty stupid. So she basically was forced into learning how to build a yeah. whole house. Ready, shoot, aim. No, I was ready to build. <laughs> that wasn't even the problem. It was like forced into figuring out the budget by myself on like something where I didn't know anything about dealing with contractors what this all cost. Stuff, well, right? well, I was general contracting, but dealing with. Because we basically needed to live here, and it was not in livable condition. So we needed to get everything done at once, which I obviously can't do everything all at once. So we had to do, like, the main things, hire people. Um, And then also there was, like, we needed a new roof. We needed new plumbing all outside. We needed new electrical panels. We needed, like, literally everything. Anyway. 
That was a stressful time. It feels but we're like, through it. It feels like one of those, uh, we're out like of the one of those old Bugs Bunny cartoons where he plays all nine positions in a baseball game. It's like yeah. Rifle Bugs, first paint Bugs. And that's like you at the house. It's yeah. like plumber, Gabby. Yeah. Electrician, Gabby. Yeah. yeah. Kitchen towels, Gabby. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so fun, though. It's so fun. I've always been so interested in like learning how to do that stuff. Like whenever there's been a problem or I need an electrician or a plumber, I'm like, can you show me how to do that so I don't need to call you the next time? Yeah. Like, right. That would be stupid. In do the you ways. notice them not wanting to teach you stuff because no, they, they know that you'll never want to teach hire me. them again? No, they're, they don't put they're two very two together friendly. Either. Yeah, right. Yeah, they probably like, she's never going to do it. <laughs> right. I don't think this actor is going to steal yeah. my job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a plumber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little does he know. <laughs> yeah. She swooped him. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but it's so crazy to look back just in retrospect because you guys, I mean, just like your literal living conditions, you were at Carnegie and then yeah. you literally built this place, a live-in flip kind of. Yeah. And then, I mean, just from your health and playing perspective, like when we met, it wasn't totally a sure thing you were going to play volleyball again. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. you went to the Olympics and won two Manhattan Beach Opens. And <laughs> yeah. It ended up working <laughs> out all right. Yeah, true. <laughs> we just wing it. Yeah. Rush on boo. <laughs> That's why it's my license plate. <laughs> just whatever. Yeah. Go with the flow. And yeah. Don't think about it too much. We stretch a little, you know? You're supposed to like play, it's probably play a little not outside the of your comfort zone to do, do big things, you know? It's yeah. probably you not the smartest yourself. way to do things, though. No. I think there's like a little it, outside your comfort zone and there's like the try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Like it's generally worked out. But, but it it's, worked. Well, yeah. So far. It worked. <laughs> That's hey. beautiful. Naya and Naya's drawing pictures. Having a blast. Having a blast. Has that, has having Naya try, not change your perspective on what you do <laughs> playing beach volleyball, but how has being a dad changed the way you operate as a beach volleyball player? Um, I think I'm just growing up in general. Yeah. And it's just like another priority to put, like I have my main thing career-wise. Be good at volleyball. Yeah. And then everything falls behind that. But then before that, it's like, you know, when you're single, it's like, that's pretty much it. Right. Just be good at volleyball. Yeah. And then, yeah, be okay. Now Gabby's a priority, and then I can be good at volleyball. Yeah. And now I have a kid, so Gabby and I have to be taken care of, and then I can be good at volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> so it just kind of slides down the list. <laughs> uh, and I think you just adapt to longer days. And, yeah. like, it blows my mind how much I didn't do when I was 23. I yeah. Know. When I first played with Hiding, because he only played three days a week. He only really? practiced three days a week, lifted three days a week switched off so i was like i'm doing whatever you do i was like but this is really easy <laughs> mm-hmm. the workouts weren't but it, and he didn't really watch film either like weekly studying yeah now i do you know five days a week of training three days of lifting um plus all the rehab and treatment in between yeah. which i was doing before but now i'm adding sports psych sessions and, yeah so i do more Bless you. and then and i have more to do off the court yeah. too before I was like, okay, practiced. Yeah. <laughs> Hit up my friends. What are we doing today? It's, you know, <laughs> one o'clock. Like. <laughs> yeah, how's the wave? So now I'm learning, like, damn, I have a capacity to do way more than I realized mm-hmm. I could do when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And then every off season, I'm like, okay, how did last year work and how could I do better? And now I'm already scheduling out my next year, like, oh gosh, like, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's holes there and I can't help but fill them. Yes, <laughs> but it's going to be more things for me to do. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but it's just I was your priorities. always so surprised at like how much of a day you can fill up being a professional volleyball player. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, how are you so busy? You literally and like some nights and now with the podcast too. Some nights yeah. he's like working until nine p.m. It's yeah. like. It's it's blows my mind because everyone like people who ask too like you know, um, it's like what could he possibly be doing? Isn't he just like practicing and then like yeah. going to the gym sometimes? But like the business side of things is crazy. I think a lot of it is spent driving back and forth to Mikel's. But <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> but that's like a I end up finding that as like a nice time. To yeah, like, yeah right. totally. Chill and not do anything. Yeah, even, totally. Even though it's LA traffic, I'm like. <laughs> yeah. 
kind of meditate through it. That's why I bought a big truck because I really did struggle. I drove even her car. It's an SUV, a small yeah. SUV. My knee started hurting like halfway well, through the drive. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is why I bought my truck yeah. so Let's I can drive back, back and back, forth and though. pay a ton of gas, yeah. but be comfy, <laughs> looking good, feeling good. It's a pretty big upgrade because when Chai first started playing beach volleyball, I was living in Los Feliz. And Chai didn't have a car. And yeah, I never he took had a car in my life. From Los Feliz to the beach. I didn't, I didn't ever <laughs> no go away. I never got <laughs> my own car until I was that guy in high school. No, no car, <clears throat> friends, give me rides. Mm-hmm. College, same thing, no car. Riley, can I borrow your car? Guys on the team, give me rides. That's why I couldn't get to the beach. I was like, this is BS. I thought I was going to surf every day living in SoCal, Los right. Angeles. I can't even get to the beach. And then, yeah, I and went over... When we, were in co- when we were dating in college, my, we yeah, took my car. Yeah, she had a car, so that was great. And then I went overseas, and that was the first time they gave me a car, right, to drive around in Puerto Rico yeah. and stuff. Turkey, they didn't give me a car, which was terrible. <laughs> and then I came back. <laughs> yeah, and that, so I was living with her. She was still in college that last year. No. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Las that well, was the one year after year, I graduated. You were in college, oh, and yeah. then... She's in Las Vegas, and I'm catching the metro down to the beach to do those EDP practices with Jeff Alzina, Alzina. and that crew. <laughs> and, and then, then he still I'd didn't get, get a car for like I'd how many get, years later. But I'd have to get someone to give me a ride from the beach to the train station, which is like a 10-minute drive. Yeah. One time I got a ride by Kurt Rambis. I didn't know who he, I didn't really know who he was. And you're like 24 at this point and still yeah, didn't have a car. Jesse Rambis <laughs> used to play with us, uh, Kurt's kid. Yeah. And I was like, just literally, anyone going inland at all? <laughs> like, bro, like, Damn, this guy's got a nice car. <laughs> Google Kurt Rambis. Now I see him in all these documentaries. I'm like, yeah. damn. He was probably like, this freaking kid. <laughs> Don't get my seat, Sandy. <laughs> And then catch the metro back. And then I got I borrowed a car from a family. Shout out to the Dyers. The, the Dyers. They hooked me up with, the, with their, their hybrid. Car for like a year. And then I finally like no, won awesome. a few tournaments and bought my own car at like 24, 25. 25. Yeah. Yeah. I was that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty amazing. That's why it's pretty amazing what, how far he's come. And that he gets now to I got a real nice track. truck. Yeah. And I just put <laughs> rims and tires on it today. I'm going to have to show that to you. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. <laughs> but that's, this is my dream car that I have right now. Yeah. And it, like, it was a long process. And I got the midsize, oh, but I could only cool lease it. Try. Yeah. And I, I made him feel all bad about getting new rims. Yeah, she's like, what? Do you really need them? I'm like, like, you know how, like, when you're in a relationship with somebody and you share money and you're like, <laughs> you don't necessarily have the same, like, um, I don't know, priorities. Attachment. Or, like, the same, like, uh, value, value yeah. up to, like, whatever. That, I think that's why a lot of married couples, like, have some private money or whatever. Because they're right. like, I want to be able to spend money on whatever I want to spend. But, like, our money is just our money. Yeah. And, um... So, and he, he like never gives me crap about anything that I buy. <laughs> and, um, I, he was like spending whatever on new rims and I was like giving him crap about it. And then I called him or like when he got home later, I was like, I'm sorry. That was really mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also said after Manhattan, I was like, yeah, I felt really okay. Bad. Now I can, I, I said, now I can get new rims. I want Manhattan. Yeah. And then I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to spend that money yet. Okay, if I win Chicago and Manhattan, yeah. I can get new rims. <laughs> and then I won both. And I was still kind of on the fence. And Mikkel's like, you better effing get those rims. Because you're going to know that in the future, you're actually lying to yourself when you promise yourself Aww. you're going to get some. Yeah. No, I feel so like you're getting worse. those rims. <laughs> and I was like, yes. You talked me into it. Aww. I'm getting them. And then I got a discount from my agent. I got a discount from the guy <laughs> down in Torrance. <laughs> So I saved some money. I'm going to sell the old ones. Yeah. And I'm still getting crap. I know. She just apologized I in did. front of I the public. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I I'm just, really you know, relationship dynamics. I was dynamic. just like, I spent. I, spent, I wear <laughs> only sponsor clothing. I just. I, just, <laughs> I haven't bought a piece of clothing ever. I just, yeah. <laughs> I just. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> rims, Good to me, story. I'm like, I look at rims and I'm like, it looks exactly the same. Like, what the hell is the difference? No, you just had to go to a brand new truck with good. brand new tires and rims on it. You need new, like, what's the difference? Yeah. 
And so, anyway, that's it. It's it doesn't like matter everyone what has I think, their though. thing, you know? I'm happy For me, that it's he's like, happy. I don't care about anything, but like, I want to have my nice truck. Like, yeah. That's, in Hawaii, I think that's a big thing. You know, everyone's got trucks, and now I got mine dialed like just how I want it. Yeah. You got your things building random. St- this yeah. girl, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're the, going. the living rooms looked perfect. The house looks perfect yeah. to me. And then every day it's like, okay, it's almost done. I'm like, wait. <laughs> oh, we need a tree over there. We need more of this. Over there. I'm like, it's done. Like, we're good. <laughs> no, it has to be perfect. I did. I came this far. <laughs> like, okay, you're just adding things in here. Yeah. No, I, I do spend quite a bit on the house. But I also save quite a bit on the house. And it looks great. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And, and I'm sure the awesome. truck looks great, too. It does look good. We're going to have to go um, see it so after. So how's married life for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys have deeper. been married for how many years now? Almost three. Whoa. And you were together for how long February. before that? We met uh, first main draw. Tri was there, actually, the day that me and Delaney met. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, when I qualified for Austin, and we were all sharing oh. uh, Jill Bush's car. Yeah. <laughs> Avery Bush's mom, and Ooh. so we stacked. It was Jill Bush was driving. You were in the uh, shotgun because yeah. you were the biggest in the back seat. It was me, Delaney, Avery, and Raffy. And oh, that was the I, kickoff. That right was the there. kickoff. That was like right the there. first sample. <laughs> that was first. Date? And then uh, <laughs> semi. <laughs> and then I remember. I'll remember this line for everyone because I, I played four matches in the Texas heat that day. So I was rancid. Yeah, Dude, I was worse than that slam dunk wine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I like squished up next to D and I was like, I'm sorry, like I smell terrible. <laughs> She's like, You smell like victory. I was like, Cool. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. And then just so happened to run into her at every AVP and for the rest of the year until we uh, took her hostage after San Francisco. That's right. To Kai's place. Oh, oh yeah. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. They went yeah. to Tri's sister's right. house. Yeah, so you're a wingman the whole time, and you didn't even know. I got you. <laughs> In the were mountains, you, very you romantic there? setting. I was not there. Yeah, I can't I was remember calling. what I was doing. Well, you just didn't come to San Francisco. I was broadcasting. Oh, yeah, that's why. Yeah. And then we all went up yeah, to my sister's in the mountains. Yeah. That's right. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. Forgot about the timeline here. Yeah. And, and then you got married bangle, in the mountains. Bear, Big Bear. Mm-hmm. We got, yeah, the mountains have been a pretty consistent place for all of our biggest moments yeah like we got in, engagement we well in. so has gabby and dry's house yeah <laughs> what do you mean when we were first dating oh. i was living in malibu yeah. and oh, trav was yeah. living in costa mesa, mesa and so we would right. go on a date when he would come up to do oh. the podcast at your place oh. yeah. <laughs> so when you guys let him stay there and sometimes me yeah. <laughs> like really facilitated this blossoming relationship yeah. that makes me so it's all part of the plan. Yeah. <laughs> and more involved than exactly you realize. Exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Matchmaker yeah. right here. Yeah. yeah. That makes so me so thing. happy. We got the borns and the mountains. Yeah. You put those two together and magic oh, happens. Magic. <laughs> so we got engaged in Yosemite, yep. married in Big Bear, honeymooned in Tahoe. Yeah. And now the mountains are just like where we go. Yeah. Whenever we want to get away from the beach. Yeah, but you have to show it to me first because it might be beer. <laughs> Naya's asking to grab a drink from the podcast drink fridge. Um, okay, go oh, ahead. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> nope, I was wrong. She actually wants art supplies. Oh, do you want some Waikia volcanic water? <laughs> or athletic greens? <laughs> Maybe you want to play with the, the Wilson, conus. Naya? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you do you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, married yeah. life is the greatest thing. I love it. Yeah, and it's cool being married to another volleyball player. I know, I was going to ask about that. What's it, it like? I think that makes it life way easier because she gets it when I travel, even though she gets pretty sad. Especially because right. I'm about to leave for like seven days. I leave for Cape Town tomorrow. Um, but she gets it though. Like when I was on the road last year, it was actually funny. We were just talking about it because you had this like not epiphany, but kind of. Well, it was kind of an epiphany. Well, (laughs) it was like a maturing moment. (laughs) As I was reflecting back on the, it was last year where you did a ton of international traveling and there weren't that many options to play domestically. So obviously like you're taking advantage of the opportunities that you had, but traveling all over the world. And, I was jealous and it was 
it was hard to like um, wrap my mind around why because I had the opportunities to play those tournaments, uh-huh. most of them, and different ones. Um, like capability wise, like skill wise, I was asked to play some of the same tournaments, but I couldn't justify spending the money on it. Mm. Uh-huh. Um, because well, and I was working um, at Pepperdine for the latter half of the year, so there was just like I was clearly in a different place with my career Mm -hmm. like outside of playing and it took me like literally a year to make the connection that Travis five years older than me like he spent that five years developing his career and his Mm -hmm. ability to be financially stable and feel like he can invest that in that travel and (laughs) I haven't put that time in (laughs) and so it's like that jealousy was basically because I'm recognizing that he's further along in his life and I don't know that I'm going to get there because I have different plans, like, for mm-hmm. my future. Like, I want to play, but I want to be a mom. <laughs> so, yeah. like, yeah. once I get to a place where I feel like I've capped my playing abilities, like, I want to have babies. So, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think I'm going to get to a place where I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to fly to Cape Town next weekend. Right. <laughs> because I can get into the tournament. Great. Like, I could, I got into a couple tournaments, so I was like... I don't think that that's worth the trip because right. it's not like aligned with my long-term goals. Yeah. Um, so it was hard when he was gone all the time, but yeah. um, I'm, I couldn't be happier that he's pursuing those opportunities that he has and like furthering his career in so many aspects, like as a player, but also relating to the players that he writes about and yeah. getting to know like personal stories and relationships with the players that he gets to now call matches for. So yeah. Yeah. it's awesome to see. And it just like took a little bit for me to get to a point where I understood that that's his path and mine's different. Right. And it doesn't mean that there has to be any like hard feelings or jealousy or anything. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting <laughs> perspective. That's yeah. such a great realization, but I'm sure like that, even though you've realized it, it probably makes it easier, but it's always probably going to be bittersweet. Cause well, I'm always going to miss him when he's gone. And it sucks to have to sacrifice one thing for the other. Like, it kind of sucks that you can't do it all. You know, that we can't yeah. do it all. Yeah, making that decision, I guess, is like a gift. I think it's a gift and a curse. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's hard to sacrifice those opportunities that I could just as easily take advantage of, but it's also to do something that I feel so privileged to be able to mm-hmm. do. So... Yeah. <laughs> Travis also has the like most unique life. Like yeah. no no other oh, player yeah. can travel the world and justify it like no. oh well I'm just doing research for my job. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm becoming a better journalist. <laughs> right. <laughs> like everyone else travels the world, they lose money. It's like Yeah. This is bad. Like yeah. I need to quit this. He's like, Oh perfect. Came out even. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It just pays off so well for him, like it's so cool. Yeah, because yeah. me and Tri were literally just having that conversation before we came on where I told Tri, I was like, me and Cody are officially into the qualifier for Cape Town. And he was like, you're definitely going to lose money. You know that, right? I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I know anytime I get on a, on a plane to play beach volleyball outside the U.S., like, I'm losing money. <laughs> and he was like, I can't believe you can justify it like yeah. that. But it's totally <laughs> different because, like, you do this full-time as a player, and I do it part-time as a player, but more full-time is commentating and writing. Um, and so it just makes like, now that I've gone to challengers and futures and you feel it and you like meet the guys, it just, it's helped me in so many ways I wouldn't have imagined. It's funny, like the last five years of doing the podcast has prepared me to be the best broadcaster I can be despite never having done it because I can just like, I don't have to do really any research on any of the players because I've been doing it for five years. Yeah. And you've like interviewed them for an hour long on your podcast. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of them. A lot of them. Yeah. And it's cool going to like feeling the intensity of paying two grand to get on a flight and hotel to Cape Town. Because, like, I know when players are sacrificing and like just to get into the qualifier, why they're doing it and how much stress there is. Because a lot of people look at our jobs as this big vacation job. And in some ways, it kind of is, but in a lot of ways, it's super stressful. Yeah. And I can actually relate to that. It's so funny because Lee Feinswalk, the owner and editor of Volleyball Mag, he texted me the other day and he's like, people on Volley Talk rip you all the time for being too soft on the players. And I was like, well, you tell them to get on a plane to South Africa to go play in a qualifier <laughs> right. and be hard on them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. And I think having that empathy for the players has made me better. Because when we, like our tagline when we made the podcast is by the players, for the players. Right. Like, 
it's not by the players for the volley talkers. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're here to promote the players in the game, and I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Yeah, for sure. And you going on the road actually brings a lot of validity to Wow, and I, you have an amazing piece of art. But it brings a lot of validity to the podcast because, like, at first it was like, okay, yeah, if Tri says that, right. That's valid. But if Travis talks about travel, uh, yeah. you don't really know. Like, does he really know what he's talking about? <laughs> right. Even about playing. That's really. true. Yeah. You were such a rookie. I hadn't made a main draw. Like, I didn't want to qualify a match when we started the podcast. And now it's like, That's you, crazy. you know what it's like to be yeah. a full time world tour player yeah. at this point. So, the just the credibility alone of our podcast value has gone up. <laughs> yeah. So, like, <laughs> you losing money has been great. Investing, <laughs> investing in us here on the podcast. That's what I'm here to do. Delaney's like, you can stop now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are probably really long, long days when you're doing the broadcasting. Yeah. I mean, you were talking about how it's, like, I think people think it's funny. Like, how does Tri fill up the day? Like, he's just a professional beach volleyball right. player. And it's crazy how fast the day goes by. Yeah. Like, today I woke up at 5.30, called five matches, uh, practiced for two hours, lifted, showered, wrote our newsletter for the podcast, and then came right here. Oh, my God. And uh, now we're talking on the pod. Yeah, it's So crazy. it's been beach volleyball since 5.30. It's so whatever nuts. time it is right now. I swear, like, yeah, there's so many things to do in a day. It's so fun, for though. You guys. It's so crazy to think that, and me and Delaney were talking about this the other day, that everything that I'm doing right now and a lot of things that Tri is doing right now weren't jobs in 2017. Mm-hmm. Like, there weren't. When I started writing about beach volleyball, it was a shitty little WordPress that I made. And then you've watched, like, the digital landscape of the sports change so much. You know, you saw, like, Volleyball Magazine, they started investing in it. Um, it went from 200,000 views a year to now 2.5 million. P1440 came in, even though it kind of flunked. Like, it's still, like, you had a $10 million investment into a mm-hmm. digital company. And then Volleyball World, they're all digital content. So you've just seen, like, the landscape of the sport change so much in five years. And yeah. then now I'm just able to do a made up job. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Trav is like the perfect imperson- or person um, or personification of the saying, like, do something you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. Right. Totally. Because he works really hard, but I like he never complains. Like it's his favorite thing. Yeah. Right. And it's so cool to see. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> That's awesome. I That's love the that. goal. Yeah. Same with Trav most of the time. That was part of my uh... He doesn't like the business side of his job. I don't like it. the sitting in the chair things. part. No, I do like business. I like the, like, competing in business and, like, communicating. The business like, strategy. Putting a team together and, like, let's work together and let's do this thing. But, like, all that stuff in between, the social media and the emails and all that, ugh. <laughs> it's rough. That's why, I, like, it's funny because I'm always, like, looking forward to the offseason. Okay, I can relax. I can finally get all these other things done and then I'm in the off season just stressing out I'm like yeah. I need the ex- I need the excuse of sorry I'm in season can't do anything yeah. <laughs> sorry volleyball is the priority yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll talk to you in a month yeah, yeah. oh we um, need chocolate emergency on the pod we got Naya a chocolate lollipop and she's been crushing and it and that's a big smile <laughs> Naya, the pod you come, daughter. come hang out on the podcast why what do you not? want to talk We're about? We're just talking. Because the people love you. Do you want to talk about what it's like to have a dad who plays beach volleyball? Or do you like to go to practice? Go sit with mama. It's so yeah. funny. Your chocolate? I was talking to Jake Gibb okay. uh, maybe a year or so ago, and he goes, I've like completely given the worst impression to my kids of what working looks like. <laughs> yeah. They come down to the beach and like, oh, dad's working again and I'm just sitting there playing beach volleyball and it's like, sorry guys, this isn't yeah, this <laughs> what most people get to do. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> because they're in for a rude awakening when they're about 17. <laughs> yeah, right. That's so true. That was the same today with, I mean, both of us are like that. Naya came with me today to an audition and it was just a commercial audition so it doesn't, you know, it's not a, if it was a different audition, I would want to focus more and not have yeah. it there. But for a commercial audition, she, like, begged me to come. And so she came. And I'm like, okay, but I'm working. This is, like, you know, like, telling her that this is work. And I literally go. I show up. I sit on the couch, chat with some other girls who are hanging out, waiting to go in, go in for 10 minutes, come out. I'm like, hey, let's go, 
grab lunch. <laughs> She's oh, wait, like, wait. oh, you were, that was your job? Wait, you tell, were... tell everyone what you did for work yesterday. Me? What? What did we do yesterday? I can't remember. <laughs> we went and saw two movie oh. premieres. Oh. <laughs> and, and had the, the actual celebrity actors talk after and do a Q&A at two movies. Two I'm on the Academy yeah, Award to, winning two, actresses. I went back to back movies yesterday. She saw the day. <laughs> it was exhausting. <laughs> it was a tough day at work. Exhausting work day. Because I'm on the SAG nominating they committee. They serve so candy and popcorn and everything for free, by the way. I get to pick like the movies or I get to, you know, my vote for the movies that I think should be um, up for a uh, okay. nomination. Um, so I get invited to like every single screen. So like, um, Wakanda forever came out yesterday and we just saw it. And then after all the actors came and did a Q and a, so we got to watch Sweet. that. And then That's right so after cool. I went and saw, um, the queen, something queen. No, the, um, the woman King. A oh, woman King. Whoops. I don't, I haven't heard of that one. Um, with, um, Viola Davis. Okay. Didn't and she win like, the Oscar for Best Actress? She has won, yeah. She's and, won. and Lupita so, Nyong'o, is that her name? Nyong'o, yeah. She won uh, Oscar yeah. for Best Actress. So literally both movies had the Best Actress so cool. of the Year cast. award so cool. in it. Yeah. Also, Viola Davis is in the movie that, um, that I just did, the Nike one. Yeah. I didn't ever get to see her on set, but I was like going to the movie. I took my dad to the screening too. I was like, yeah, that's my, my co-star up there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, my bestie. No, but yeah, that was fun. Which that's awesome <clears throat> that you got to do that Nike movie, by the way. Oh yeah. That was so, so Is cool. that the <laughs> most star studded cast you've Oh, been for around? sure. I'm like, I, by I, a long yeah. shot. I don't think you could ever beat that. No, you, well, I mean, I that was what know, but ben, ben Affleck yep. is doing that? Is he, is he producing that? Producing, directing. Okay. He's directing, and then Matt Damon is producing, too. And then the cast is, like, ridiculous. Yeah. You got to hang out with Jason Bateman. Yeah, I did my He's telling you Jason that you're pretty Bateman. dang good at your job. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> oh, thanks, Trav. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's fun. I feel like Affleck's undefeated oh, as yeah. a producer and, yeah. and a director. Everything he's made, I feel like, has been awesome. So good. And they hadn't done something. They haven't teamed up since. Or, Him and Matt Damon? Yeah. Because they've done, what did they so maybe do before? A couple. Like well, Good like Will Boston Hunting guys. is like Goodwill their hunting. main, okay. you know. That was the first thing that they ever did. That was the first thing that they did, did together. And they did it yeah. together. And then that blew them up. Yeah. And then they. This is the first time they came back together and. I think they might have done one of those things together right. since, but well, okay. I think it was maybe their first reunion since that. Anyway, yeah. We just watched a scene from Goodwill Hunting last night. Oh, you did. My boy's wicked. How smart. come just a scene? <laughs> it just popped up. We were watching something on YouTube. Right. I forget what. Yeah, something prompted it, but and it's it a just great popped movie. up, oh, I and love I was it. like, let's just watch a scene a good from movie. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> movies are so good. What's your f- favorite? Like, when you watch a movie, is it impossible for you to watch a movie now just as a entertainment? Because uh, I can't read yeah. n- normally. Like, I'll go back and oh, look yeah. at the structure and how they do the... Oh, like, interesting. How they introduce characters and whatever. You're definitely in and out of it more. It takes more to be in it the whole time and yeah. not having, like, outside thoughts of, like, oh, you know. But, um... But no, there's definitely movies where I'm like in it, not from like an audience perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Because even after we filmed that movie in Bulgaria, when I was yeah. watching, I remember the first movie I watched after was Creed. And they did this fight sequence of just a uh, single camera tracking. And yeah. I was like, this is insane. Yeah. Like, they must have shot that a hundred times. Oh my gosh. This is a two minute sequence. I know. No, it like, really does make you look at things differently. Yeah. I think after I did the, this most recent one, because there were a lot of extras involved. Mm-hmm. And so you're like watching them and it's so funny when you're there watching what they're doing because they're just mm-hmm. like, <laughs> it's just funny. I was, <laughs> I was wondering what that, the extras are, <clears throat> are talking about. Yeah? yeah. Do you just pick a random oh, subject? Oh, it's hilarious. Like, do they, they do. Do they say like, well, we're talking here. Like, are yeah. we, what do you no, want to talk most about? Most of them bro, are or? very committed and like pretend like they're actually. But and then the other person's since, like, "You're you're way too serious right now. Like, no one cares what we <laughs> talk about." No, because you can barely <laughs> see them, but they take it. No, it's a very important job, but they, they take it very seriously. But now, when I'm watching extras, like in a movie, I'm like watching them walk by, and I'm like, it's just so funny. 
like how much thought <laughs> they're putting just, into like, their walk. Or... Yeah, or just like in general, <laughs> like, you know, because it's just so out of context, you know, if you're actually just watching them. Right. You realize like when you're watching a busy street in New York City and you actually look at all the people walking, like they're so in their head and not yeah. really, you know what I mean? So it's just interesting if you really look close to extras because... They're probably overcomplicating it. Yeah. Like yeah. way more than they bit. need to be. And like, bro, you're just like me and Travis <laughs> in your show. Oh, yeah. Try, show. Try she, and Travis Gabby were put extras us in so my show. So far in the back. <laughs> like it was well, just. Well, you guys were, we were watching just, freaking Tiger Woods. <laughs> okay, Tiger Woods was about to win the Masters after coming back for like 15 years. So yeah. they were not taking their job. No, they were no, not taking their job. We, were, we, had, we were carrying our lumber and we had Tiger Woods. On the lumber, so we're talking and looking at the lumber, which is exactly yeah. what a good oh lumber man should be doing. <laughs> and then I had Travis do some like up close and personal oh, yeah. camera work. I still have the picture of that that like humongous camera just right, right up, up in his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell you the details. No, <laughs> you'll just have to wait. For Leave the it at that. <laughs> you can watch it wait, online. Can can people watch that? Yeah, you can try and see Try and Travis in the yeah, back Travis watching Spartans. Tiger Woods. <laughs> Wait, how do people watch that? Um, it's on my Instagram account. It's my so I. Oh, that's right. I made a a little series. It's like each episode is only three minutes long, <clears throat> and um, like as a pitch concept for the show that I'm working on writing in further detail, but. Try and Travis are in the background. You can see on my Instagram and under my videos, if you click series, Mac of all trades, they are in there in the background in one of the episodes. Yeah, right. In the credits, it says starring Tribord. Tribord and, and Travis. And then Tri has the extra credit of Spider Wrangler. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I made sure that was in there. You guys I, um, are the best. I went to the side of the house, found a spider web, lured him out with a little bait. So I caught a fly. Threw it in this web, waited till the spider <laughs> came out to get the fly, and then went in with the bag on my hand, oh my inside out the bag, boom, spider, <laughs> wrangler, <laughs> put me in the credits. We're seeing it, a different side the way, of Trevor and Travis right now. I mean, <laughs> just call me Hollywood. Come on now. I'm, I'm full Hollywood. And the, my spider performed, by the way. No, it was like, honestly, couldn't have been better. I picked this the right shot spider. of the spider is so good. When, and I, see I, potential, when I see potential in a spider, you, you're going to want to trust me. Yeah. They no. should have hired me for Spider-Man. No. <laughs> I couldn't believe the story of how he caught the spider, though, when... They when he told me, <laughs> I'm like, you literally <laughs> came up with a whole game plan as to how to catch the it spider. It wasn't my first time. And it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I've been catching spiders since I was a kid. Sure. <laughs> it's not a nap if it's nighttime. It's just Naya sleep. just <laughs> asked if we could play this game called Pathfinder that Tri created when we went camping a few weeks ago. It's very, it's a great game. I'm good at that too. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Children's game creator oh. and Spider Wrangler. Spider Wrangler. I know, yeah. Delaney and Travis are the ultimate game players. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're, we're board gamers. They're gamers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ticket to Ride has been the game of kind of. The, we, we were big setups of Catan. I know. Guys for a while. Yeah. And then that craze ended, and Ticket to Ride has been the go to. I'm a big fan of Bananagrams. Oh, she I is a banana grammar. That's a good game for the road. A lot of people bring that on the road. Very portable. It's super portable. That is amazing. She made a zoo. <laughs> Out of her <laughs> magnet tiles. <laughs> it's kind of so interesting because we all have careers that are very tied into just what we want to be doing. Yeah. Which is mm-hmm. kind of rare for a lot of people. Yeah. And like for your career, are we, we're all kind of, we're all kind of blending in it. Like it. Our actual career that we're pursuing, like yours, journal, sports journalism, yeah. volleyball, volleyball, and acting, but we all kind of had to find like a unique path to actually get there. Yeah. Or maybe it's coaching. I don't know which one's like the priority. Yeah, why don't you yeah. talk about that? But like you that? really like went through <laughs> coaching yeah. and blended in with volleyball to make it oh, like absolutely. a full on living. Coaching was like, well, yeah, it not only allowed it to be financially sustainable, mm-hmm. but I improved so much as a player by spending time as a coach, looking at the game that way, being like 
in that role where I'm giving the advice and seeing from the outside when players have those breakdowns or those frustrations and just like it gives you an extra perspective mm-hmm. than when you're in those moments you're like oh this actually isn't that big of a deal right, <laughs> yeah. right yeah like get a grip or just like do the extra reps or just whatever the perspective is and so yeah it absolutely gave me a huge leg up as a player it was like maybe that roundabout way to yeah. to continue to excel in that um goal yeah. Um, yeah. It, it became. <laughs> oops. There's it became dog. a little bit of. It was a lot of the same when I took it on as the full time assistant coach. So I think that in the future it's going to have to be one or the other. Mm. I'm not going to go back to being a volunteer, and I think being no, a full time sure. assistant coach is too much while I'm still playing. But yeah. it definitely worked together super well. Yeah. At the beginning. Is that something you would do? I love teaching, so if that's, like, my area of expertise, that'd be the easiest way to get into teaching. Um, I just love witnessing and facilitating those light bulb moments and the improvement, and, Mm -hmm. like, especially working with, like, at the collegiate level, when you're working with athletes who are invested, who want to learn, like, Mm -hmm. you just have to give them the direction rather than, like, it being, like, pulling teeth or trying to convince them that it's worth doing. Um, So, yeah, it was... I would definitely consider it in the future going back to it. Yeah. yeah. I think about it a lot. Like, I don't want to want to coach, but I know there's something in me that's like, I should try it. I think I would like it if I was in the right role. Like, you put me at the administration part of it, <laughs> game over. Yeah. But the, like, teaching and, like, being involved with and, like, sharing everything I have with, like, people that actually care and want it. Because yeah. I do private sometimes. Like, nah. Yeah. Your mom wants you to right me to teach you how to play volleyball. Like, I mean, I'm down to take her money and all. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the South Bay, you can charge a, a decent amount. Yeah, but I I just get burnt out so quickly. And even if the money's worth it, I just don't even do it anymore. Yeah, unless know. the person really wants to know, and then you're like, it makes it all worth it because I know they care about it, and yeah. I would love to share. What I'll I- it literally if there's a kid that really is really into it i'll go out for free i don't care like i enjoy teaching yeah and like sharing that knowledge with someone yeah. but like yeah the whole like i'm just here to get paid and you're just here to like so your mom knows that you'll take a nap later <laughs> yeah. or like you know get some energy out and hang around hang you around the, babysitting yeah. yeah hang around the <laughs> pro athlete kind of thing like nah i'm i'm good on that so college I don't know. I was I was in a rush to get out of college. <laughs> but if I can go back and I don't have to do any of the homework. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. hard at the collegiate level to avoid the administrative side of it because unless you're maybe the head and you get to it, yeah, push it, depends, it off on everyone. Yeah, it depends on the dynamic of the coaching staff, but be, because in the beach volleyball collegiate sphere, I think that all the programs are understaffed right now. Mm. It kind of falls on everyone and yeah. in my experience like a little bit on everyone. Um, But I do think that that's like the sweet spot of not only working with athletes who care and who are invested, but who also have a lot of potential rather than working with like, and don't get me wrong. I love working with the adults who do like the better at beach camps and clinics and stuff. And I've done a couple of lessons with um, some of them on the side, but it's like, what are we working for? Right. And there's only so much that they're going to get to. Whereas the collegiate athletes, like, the sky is the limit if yeah. that like especially as the game is growing like it is it's so cool to see <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you're, you're helping people young people work towards their dreams potentially yeah. whereas yeah. like the everyday weekend warrior is just like i just want to beat my friend right. can you teach yeah. me how to do that and i'm yeah. like i love that you're passionate about it but i don't really have time for you <laughs> 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 at this point in my life yeah But that's why, I mean, Burek and Brandon Joyner, when we had them on, they love coaching adults. Yeah. Because when you you have an adult and they sign up for that camp and they get that one, like, moment, they're like, oh, I do this set, this foot forward on setting or whatever. They're so stoked on it. They're so fired up. It's so awesome. And they care and they're invested because it's their money, not their parents' money. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's a different kind of fun. Yeah. Doing, I think you would have fun coaching, like, an adult camp because they get so stoked yeah on they're there like more for like the learning yeah aspect of it when you see that light bulb go off and it's yeah. like it's the biggest thing yeah, yeah. That's honestly awesome. i've thought of doing like um what sounds really fun like i love those volley vacation things yeah. and i know everyone has fun players yeah. 
maybe like a sandcast volley vacation, you know? We do yeah. our own. In uh, Hawaii. And we like stoke people. Yeah, the only thing that makes me not want to do it is setting it up. Yeah. <laughs> like doing all the, <laughs> the small things. Like I used to yeah. put on, what, two years in a row I did my free clinics in Hawaii for the years. kids. Yeah. Yeah, just to like give back. I want to. Yeah, like, every year he's yeah. like, I want to do the clinic, but I don't want to do the the work I, it on was setting so much it up. Work. So if anyone out there wants to help put on a clinic, you email us in Hawaii at bornonthebeach at gmail dot com. Sounds right up my alley. Oh, just to the pod, Mama. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And, and sad on collegiate sports, you get a lot of administrative stuff. Let's <laughs> do it. Sandcast Volleyball Foundation will run it through there. Perfect. Yeah, it's not a thing yet, but no, yeah, it could be. <laughs> Me and Trav will all co- go out to Hawaii, and then we'll yeah do clinics, and I'll, we'll just show up and coach and yeah. set up the courts and. Manual labor, I'm good at. <laughs> I can show up to a news thing, you know, to promote it. We but can yeah, do a all podcast other... on site in Hawaii. Oh, yeah, we'll do a few of those. Yeah. It's, com- it's coming together. Perfect. All right, well, there's the job opening just closed. <laughs> <laughs> you had your chance. <laughs> Our first candidate. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we found someone. <laughs> It's always so funny when Marcio would introduce Delaney at Pepperdine to like new <laughs> new uh, recruits or their parents. They'd say, "This is our assistant coach, Delaney." Would mention that she was an All American, national champion, plays on the AVP, has like all these big wins, won the Queen of the Beach. You'd be like, "Delaney can fly a plane, and she makes a killer spreadsheet." That was how he would introduce me as his assistant coach. That's amazing. Makes me sound really incredible. <laughs> Yeah. Like, what about volleyball? (laughs) Wait. This is your coach or your director of ops? (laughs) Who's our coach? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, uh, can we go back to you can fly a plane? (laughs) It's been a while, Mm -hmm. but yeah. (laughs) I have my private single engine pilot's license. Really? Yeah, I got it at the end of my freshman year at PEP. Whoa. Yeah. How many hours did that take? Um I had over 80. You only wow. need to log 60 to take the test, but I got extra. <laughs> wow. You can take a plane up by yourself? Um, legally you right now, some. no. I do feel like I have the knowledge base and the practical like reps, but you're supposed to do a check ride every two years, and I haven't actually been up in right. a plane since I took my first ride to get my license. <laughs> so it's not updated? No, it's not current, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. So, like, if we all got lost and somehow had a plane, (laughs) you'd be able to get us out of there. That was always traveling with the team. One of our, well, there's always someone who's, like, terrified of flying. Deanna Kraft was the number one because she was a player while I was a player and also the whole time I was coaching. And she joined the staff last year, too, but she's, like, totally afraid of flying. So she would always sit next to me. And then she would know that if something happened to the pilot, that I could take over. And then if we were in turbulence. Well, maybe we'd go with the co-pilot first. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but so you. if there was some kind of a disaster, but also like anytime there was turbulence, she'd be like, "Are we okay?" I'm like, "Yes." That is amazing. <laughs> <We're fine. laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. So now everyone's learned a lot about Delaney. Great spreadsheets. She's <laughs> yeah. administrative. She's, yeah. and she She's a vice plane. <laughs> She's not casually. biggie. Capable. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Love it. <laughs> we were wondering what would come up on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah there it is. <laughs> we're all learning today. I know. I'm realizing that we all kind of like pick what we wanted to do but then like it wasn't really realistic so we all pick something else <laughs> to like lead us in lead that. us back to doing what we want to do yeah. so we can still do what we want to do but you gotta pick something else to work on so yeah. That, yeah. there's the lesson here people yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't give up on your way. dream just like finagle it a little bit <laughs> i love that <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like uh gosh someone says like don't burn the boats like don't go to California and just think you're going to make it as a professional beach volleyball player. Maybe still rely on your journalism income before right. you do that, or you're going to move back to Florida really yeah. fast. Ryan Doherty <laughs> came out to California to be a pizza guy. <laughs> seven, foot pe- seven foot one pizza man. And then he picked up, what, Casey Patterson and you did then right. became a volleyball player. Yeah. I was an indoor volleyball player and a beach volleyball player at the same time. So that's, yeah. that's kind of <clears throat> the and while best you, they can get, and I while guess. you were acting, you were doing the bartending waitress thing. The bartending waitress thing. And now, I mean, okay, really, though, <clears throat> the reason I'm doing all the, like, DIY stuff is because I'm working on creating a show 
for me to act in <laughs> about a girl who does that. And that's my kind of like way in right yeah. now. So it's very accurate. Yeah. Let's try. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cool to see, like Dry said, that all of us have sort of found a way to make it work, whatever yeah. it is we wanted to do. But it's funny because I never in a million years would have thought yeah, beach volleyball, that's it for me. Yeah. Right? Farm town kid from Maryland. You know, but did you always know you wanted to be an actor? Um, since I was... Or actress. Yeah, since I was like well, 11 or 12. Okay. Yeah, that was what I wanted to do. And yeah. now you're making your own stuff, which and is pretty sweet. To, yeah, you have to. Is you it? you got to. Like, how much did actually acting in movies and shows prepare you to make your own thing? Because I'm sure you saw a lot of things. You're like, that's not the way I want to do it. That's great. This is great. Like, this show's yeah. cool. Well... Um, no, it definitely prepared me, but it's different. Like when you're doing it on a really small budget too, you basically yeah. take on all the roles. Yeah. So you're like a location scouter, <laughs> you're like yeah. wardrobe, you're, you know, like kind of everything, um, <clears throat> other than the people that you do bring on. So, but, um, no, I, I guess after doing it, it made me realize that like that is definitely not 100% what I... You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would rather just be acting. Okay. I mean, I like being able to create stuff that I want to work on. Yeah. That's the only reason to do it, because then it's like, oh, I know I like this. Yeah. But at the same time, um, I that's my preference. It's yeah. like... Because it's, it's such, like, an investment to make your own. And I feel yeah. like the stress of it is probably monumental oh, as compared yeah. to just acting. Yeah, a hundred percent. There's so much stress that goes into like producing is the most stressful job out there. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, just in in that little volleyball movie we did in Bulgaria, they went through like three directors. Oh my god. Well, three assistant directors. Yeah. I was like, man, this is tough. Yeah. <laughs> this is <intense. laughs> yeah. Got thrown over here. <laughs> yeah. Oh and I don't know God. how movies are normally shot. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a very small sample size, but it's like, yeah. I don't know if this is how it always goes. This I love is a that you filmed ride. the movie. You and Try are trickling into <laughs> all of the areas <laughs> I know. that you can. It's so cool. That's what's cool about it, too, is like how much Feature Volleyball kind of does um, collide with that world. I mean, or sports in general, yeah. kind of like the, it's like the entertainment aspect yeah. of it. It's all so similar. Yeah. It's like that big Venn diagram. You got sports and entertainment. Yeah. There's a really big middle. Yeah. yeah. But That's I mean, cool. the last five years have been a wild ride. Oh, and yeah. obviously, forecasting five years from now yeah. at our 10 year anniversary is going to be tough. <laughs> I want to be the uh, Shaquille O'Neal of volleyball. Ooh. Not just the dominance, but. Yeah. No, because he was in like movies and stuff. Yeah. I'm oh, like, yeah. Gabby, come on. I, I can know. act. He's like, teach me. I took two improv classes. I know. I just blasted him, too. I just did a podcast where I, like, and he was listening. I was, like, listening I back to it. I got her the it. podcast, too. And he was listening. <laughs> it was, was Alan Stein. He was listening okay. at, like, the... The exact moment where I was like, oh, yeah, tries the worst reader you can possibly <laughs> imagine. I'm never using him as a reader ever again, blah, blah, blah. And then I felt bad because, <clears throat> Thanks, I mean, yeah, he's not a good reader. But that doesn't mean <laughs> that he couldn't one day be a great, yeah. you know, actor. I, feel yeah. like. I was very uncomfortable reading. Like when she asked me to do it like in... Just <clears throat> not even on camera, just reading. Behind the camera I, as a reader for audition tapes. That's what we're talking about because everything's kind of become virtually. You're not going into rooms as much anymore. You're doing a lot of self-tapes where you record it at your house and you need somebody to read the other lines. So try, I would ask him to be my reader. And <laughs> it was just like, and also like, Mind you, he's exhausted at the end of a day of doing all the volleyball things that he does. So his mind is just like gone and he's just trying to read and he, he'll stumble five times. And I'm like, OK, do you know how much it takes just to like be in it for me mentally to get to do a take and then <laughs> yeah. like to have it be on you? That's about five times in a row. Like, it's so frustrating. And then I try to get into character. And, uh, and then, no. <laughs> no he doesn't like my that. accents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Reading in general, reading out loud is not a skill of mine. Since I, was a kid, I literally was in special ed for reading and all that stuff. 
And Travis, I mean, we recorded the the YK YK commercial, commercial like <laughs> five times. He nailed it every time. He's just like, yeah. I mean, I'll just say my lines. It's really easy. Like, <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> My okay. brain goes so, over there while I'm reading, and it goes all over. So, and then I'm trying to do, like, an acting thing all of a sudden. It's all very this to say, reading is not a strong suit, but maybe once he knows the lines, he could be a good actor. Yeah. We, won't, we don't know. Well, we could start with me just kind of, you know, improv yeah. playing myself. Yeah. See if I can get out of my I think he really does self. want to try that one day. I could try it. Yeah. I think that's the way to go. Oh, change of costume. And <laughs> Naya just came in, <laughs> changed into a new outfit. She just got back from wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> in her princess dress. It's all she wants to hey, wear. Hey, how'd you get that quarter? You got to work for money. No, that's from in my room. I found it. Oh. Uh, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it's for you. It's for dad? Yeah. Wow, that's so nice. Thanks. Well, so in, in five years, Tri's going to be the Shaquille O'Neal of beach volleyball. Great. Where are you going to be at in five years, Gab? Oh, man. That's a good question. I don't know. I, I like, barely can even plan tomorrow. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, I have obviously a lot of, like, hopes and dreams. Um, I hope I'll be acting more consistently, making movies and TV, um, maybe another kid at some point. <clears throat> I'll put that off as long as I can. <laughs> um, and then... Um, <laughs> the original plan was the kids already supposed to be here right well, now. Well, right? I just keep changing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. Something, that's the goal. Yeah. yeah. How about you guys? How about you two? Do you, baby? Delaney? I think in five years we'll probably have a kid. A kid or two or three. <laughs> Maybe two or one. <laughs> but outside of that, I'm not sure. I feel like, I, like I've like i kind of always felt like the world is open for me. I could go into whatever I wanted. So mm-hmm. we'll see which way my heart is pulled. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You gotta just keep writing it. To f- <laughs> Shit just keeps popping up, man. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so who knows? I mean, you're an actor now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, I mean, five years from now is the L.A. Olympics. Mm. So hopefully I'll be broadcasting your Oh, my gosh, match. that's insane, Travis. That would be ideal. <gasps> yeah. You can be Mr. Positive on that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then so. you guys can schedule a podcast for right after. Exactly. <laughs> on the sand. Celebratory podcast. We'll do our 10-year anniversary podcast. On the sand, the sand of the uh, the Santa Monica Pier, they're having it. Yeah, and uh, I'll just pop out. I'll take off my NBC shirt, put back on my <laughs> Sandcast shirt. We'll have your gold medal dangling oh around your God. neck. Bring some champagne. What a beautiful picture you just painted. <laughs> Manifest it. And we'll I love use that. this footage if that actually happens. Yeah, that's it. perfect for our documentary. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So in oh yeah, have a documentary. Hopefully, we'll, we'll have made our um our documentary. Yeah, yeah, we are. Four-year-old documentary. We're still working on it. We're working on a documentary about Tri's health journey and story. It just gets better and better. It's always tough to drop it when you're like, well, now he's an Olympian. All right, well, Manhattan. Okay, Chicago. All right, well, we'll just keep putting this from our Yeah, we'll just keep adding to it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stop doing um, dumb things and, like, things that make my life way more challenging. (laughs) Like breaking your hand? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> is that what hey, you're talking they about? Have, they that should that have put a bigger pad on the ref stand. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on me. They're well, lucky I didn't file a lawsuit. It all <laughs> <laughs> they should consider themselves. <laughs> we could have a house in Hawaii. It all, <laughs> it all just adds to the greatness of the story. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. We're in Hollywood. We're near Hollywood, you know? You got to... Play to your audience. So you're <laughs> oh my god! We're just uh, okay. we're just making Bollywood, really. Bollywood, Volleyball, Hollywood, bam, uh. intersection. <laughs> Sports entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is important to understand that our sport is entertainment. Yeah, there. I think ninety percent, maybe more, of the people involved with our sport don't realize that it only exists as an entertainment entity. Yeah. And if everyone had that mindset, which we're kind of trying to, like, put that out there and tell people, like, hey, like, Miles Partain, get a social media. Like, 
Dude, 100% respect that you're not trying to waste your life on that because yeah. it can absolutely waste your life. But, like, you're going to want sponsors. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Like, Buttinger, the fact that he doesn't have a massive following from all those years in the NBA, that's valuable, very valuable yeah. stuff. And if, if you're, like, business-minded, like, okay, why, why are all these other things happening behind the scenes rather than, like, kind of feeling entitled to like the tour should do this for me they should have this they should have thicker pads so they don't break my hand when I decide to punch it <laughs> you realize that this is a business and everything has a reason behind why it's yeah. there and you're not necessarily entitled to be there like you earn that opportunity to capitalize and make a living <clears throat> within that business yeah I think it, I think it would change the whole landscape of volleyball if all the players were thinking like that yeah you just got deep fired <laughs> up i can tell oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i 100 percent agree like i it drives me crazy just to hear and i'm sure you guys have touched on this so many times on here but like yeah just the idea of this they should do this they should expand the draw because there's so many good players and yeah. it's like just economics 101 supply yeah. and demand just because you have the supply doesn't mean you have the demand yeah. we have to create the demand the demand is entertainment it's not High performance, even right. Mm-hmm. Like you could have low. I mean, you can have low performing athletes that are entertaining, and that's where the money is going to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. So we have to find have to know our role. <laughs> Look at um, like on a big scale. What's his name? Jake Paul and his brother. Yeah. What's his brother's name? I don't know. Oh man, um, I forget. But uh, they're good yeah. athletes, but not high performing athletes. Logan Paul. Right. In their. Uh, in their particular field. field. Yeah. And guys like a lot of people are giving him crap for it. Like you guys are YouTubers, like get the hell out of here. But then you hear like Mike Tyson talk about, it. he's like, no, these guys are the best thing for our sport. And the Mayweathers and they're like, we're not, we're here to make money. Like, why do you think I fought Conor McGregor? Right. And just had a shit talking battle with him for like a week straight. It's yeah. like just to, purely to make money. He knew I was going to win. I knew I was going to win. Like those guys really, really understand it. And I, I think, I think because it's not, I don't think beach volleyball necessarily needs needs that. Because I mean, the the Pauls, I mean, they're good for boxing, but it's kind of a circus. <clears throat> I think what LeBron's doing, he started his own media company yep. with the Uninterrupted, and he's creating documentaries. Like he produced the Redeem Team, yeah. didn't he? Like that was his company. Yeah, <laughs> him I producing mean, things <clears throat> probably looks like. I'm sitting down in the room and be like, let's produce it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know when yeah. it's ready. I don't know. I'm, I'm just knows? picturing that. Who knows? We can't assume. I watched yeah. it last night and it was, I mean, it's such a simple thing to make because the, all the guys in the show are celebrities. Yeah. So just sit them down with interviews and then throw footage on top and you have like one of the best Netflix films right. of the year. But I think uh, it, like LeBron, he blended one of the highest performers in basketball history with he understands it's an entertainment business as well. And I think that intersection is amazing Mm -hmm. where, you know, the Pauls are just purely entertainment. One of them is actually pretty good at fighting. Um, I forget which. No. Yeah. One of them is really good at fighting. Yeah. But not compared to the top boxers. Right. Compared to, right. He's just picking and choosing guys that (laughs) are, that he can beat. Yeah. But it's cool to see guys who get like the business side of the sport as performance and entertainment. And people want to see that behind the scenes stuff and what you know what Kobe was doing while everyone was out in Vegas at right. six in the morning. They come back and he's walking into the weight room like yeah. that's awesome. It's cool to see when like everyone sort of when they get it. It's like that's it right there. That's why I think like what the McKibbins have done within our sport yeah. is so cool because they valuable. literally stopped playing mm-hmm. to start making a living in this sport. That's like proving the point right there that it's not about nobody cares how good you are really. Yeah, but I think Unless, it also comes down to, like, your passion. And I, I think they are really passionate about that side of things, which yeah, is yeah. what makes them so good at it. They're passionate about both, though. I yeah. think, uh, like, Riley especially, like, probably, because I know him very well, probably wants to know what his potential would have been to a certain extent, but he's so good at so many things. Yeah. And he's so smart. And he realized, like, well, with my size and my vert, and even if I'm really good, I'm only going to get to this point. And for him, that 
wasn't, you know, the upside wasn't quite as high as in the business world. He can go. There's no ceiling, really, mm-hmm. um, for both of them, even. But yeah, I think it's just it's a good like example within the volleyball community of like what you can be doing. And Burek's doing a great job with it too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been cool to see actually, because even though like. Or the podcast was kind of the first of it, but there's been kind of this effect. Like, I mean, the McKibbins are huge, and what they're doing on YouTube is awesome. And then Bjork, he invested big time into YouTube, and he's kind of found that intersection of business and, and volleyball. And he is, I think, one of the best coaches uh, I've worked with. And watching him work those camps is so fun. He's built for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's just Mark Bjork in a nutshell. It's just yeah. like yeah. being excited. Caffeine. And like, yeah, <laughs> Coaching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Volleyball and people and energy. Yep. And he's a really good player. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just uh, he's expecting a kid. No way. Yeah. He just... I didn't watch the gender reveal, but he did the gender Aww. reveal today. Aww. Yeah. In yeah. Ireland, of all places. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> more caffeine for Bjork. <laughs> nice. Yeah, he doesn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, I think we all probably need some dinner. Yeah, I think it's time to fire up it's that Barbie. You Barbie got it. Time. We don't have a Brazilian around to take over, but I can I do it. Love to eat outside. Oh, you want to eat outside? That sounds great. All right, you guys heard it. Come. Naya just learned how to use the stapler while we were in this <laughs> podcast session. <laughs> She's crushing it. Queen Naya wants to staple stuff and eat outside, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Naya, do you nice. want to come say shoots? Do you want to come say shoots? Say it right into the microphone so everyone can hear. You can bring the stapler. Wait. Okay, she's very serious business right now yeah. with this. It's been fun though. We haven't done a full uh, family a full cast fam episode. Yeah, yeah, this was really Ever. fun. <laughs> yeah, the last time D was on, you were still coaching at Pep. Yeah. And um, what was the rule? Like, you would only agree to come on under some condition. I forget what it was. Well, you used to have the rule that you had to get at least a fifth on the AVP, and I still have never had that. Was that a rule? Yeah. Is it like kind oh, of a, like that's what like you guys were kind rule, of understood. But that was like because I usually. I'm the one who texts people to come on. Right. Right. And I was like, I think of the fifth is kind of the barometer. Meanwhile, I've never gotten a fifth. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So I've never gotten a fifth either, but I think I won Seaside and you said that that was good enough. Yeah. Definitely. And good I enough. think I maybe knew that he was struggling to get some water. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> we call that flirting. Well, that's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And exactly. he just really wanted to talk to you that's for an hour. <laughs> It's. I mean, hey, we've learned. We've learned that it's not about the sports. Not about necessarily high performance. It's about impact in the volleyball yeah, absolutely world. So and we with have that, people, and we have our celebrity guest and here with to that, do Naya the outro. I would like to say, shoots, shoots. Say, <laughs> see you later, everybody. Say, See you later, everybody. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> you did so good. Great job, Nye. Mm. Shoots. Shoots. <laughs> <laughs>